All right, welcome back, everybody. We're here for Anstall Racing IMSA Series Season 7, Round 5 at the Hockenheim Ring in Germany. We've got uh, returning Matthias Weiten in the GTP category, but right now focuses on the GT3 field as they head out for qualifying. And then use all the curb again here now into that hairpin section, famous hairpin section. What happened here at the Grand Prix 2017 and he gets all loose Ted Jan Bloman as he goes through the hairpin and has to bail out of the lap. I think that means that Adam Jarvis, if we can find his camera, will be the next car to go across the line. Uh, well, the first car to go across the line. And Gerard's was quicker than him in the middle sector though and Renz Kirk has gone quickest in the first sector further down the order so that's the lap time for them all to be at 139.2 and then it's been by Jan Gerard straight away 138.6 so it's like six tenths out of Adam Jarvis's Porsche's doing well as Sven Elmer slots into P2 now P3 as Renz Kirk goes quickest in the McLaren in only a second race in the Anstor Racing IMSA series so Adam Jarvis tumbling down the order as it happens right now Yannick Gerard goes purple in sector 3 and slots up to P1 with a big improvement. Porsche back to the top. And a couple more people sliding up. Chad Ron Blowman, P6. Jose Carlos Villarejo up to P10. What can Oriol Falk do through the final sector? And it's a purple lap time, so that's going to send him to the top of the timing board by just over four hundredths of a second. He'll be happy with that. Mario Michael Klenberger looking to improve again. At his home race on the back stretch and he does improve only up to p12 we'll be hoping for a little bit more than that we've got some am drivers really mixing it up at the moment renz verkirks van elmers dave van eck all am drivers sitting third fourth and fifth overall so it could be in for a really interesting race today with potentials for ams to get podiums and uh mateus about three times quicker than his teammate through sector one but still two times Three times, in fact, off of what Hanto did in Sector 2. So, so far, incredibly close throughout this lap. And that is your first lap time, a 1 minute 7.665 from Albert Prem. Emre Kamalda gets quicker. Albert Prem's lap was actually invalidated from an off-track, unfortunately. Quanto Avali goes quicker than his rival Emre in the Cadillac. What does the Porsche driver Mateus Weitzen do? P3 after his first run. He'll have been hoping for a little bit more than that, but it's pretty solid run. Alvaro Gutierrez slots in in... P4, Jeffrey Ross is still to come across the line. Liam DeCock as well. He was considering not racing today. He's not feeling very well, but he's going to try and tough it out. And So Emre, purple in sector one, purple in sector two, really looking to improve. The Cadillac looking strong here today. As it has done so many times, it's hitting users all of the curb there, but you won't get in trouble for that at all. Jeffrey Ross didn't set a valid lap time last time round, and neither did Liam de Kock, they were both invalidated, so that's five drivers that didn't set valid laps on their first attempts. It is not going to bode well for the instant count in the race either. So Emery Yellow in that final sector, but still sets the purple lap time by just over half a second, just under half a second. Well, Alvaro is going to be looking to displace him though there, purple in sector two. Eloy goes quickest by half a tenth. Congratulations, Mateus moves up to P3, and Alvaro moves up to P3 in his place. So, it's all about stringing the complete lap together here today. We've seen some quick drivers in sectors that have been two and a half times off the pace or more. And through the final section, gets all over the curve, but like we said, that's perfectly valid. And then that is a new uh, pole position provisional time. 125.4. Oh, but Preem with the purple lap time goes to pole position. We missed that. There wasn't anything super mega on those sectors. He just strung three greens together. And that's moved him up to pole position. That's really, really, really impressive towards the end of this session. That'll take in a lot of drivers by surprise there as well. Let's have a track nicely. Tell you what, though, Alvaro's gone purple in sector two. He was a tenth slower than Albert Prem in sector one, and then he was two times quicker in sector two. So it's all going to be down to this final sector. And can he string it together? Sector two has got a lot of big long straights. He gets a little bit loose through the penultimate corner. Now through the final corner, using all of the track that he can. And is it going to be good enough for pole? No, it's not. He doesn't improve on his previous lap time. He lost another tenth in sector three, unfortunately. 
short formation lap here as well today it's not the full lap it's still pretty long they start just after the hairpin we're coming through that final sector now i think we've escaped the rain that was potentially on the way it was meant to come in practice it looks like it never came so if it didn't come in practice we're definitely not going to get any in the race and the clouds in the sky would suggest we're hitting for a dry one today So as I'm sure anybody that's joined us previously, and any of the drivers that are watching this on replay, will be well aware that Albert Prem will control the field. He'll have to go in the start zone, which has been made clear to the drivers in the driver briefing. So he has full control of the pack now. He can go any point during that start zone, but he has to go before the end of it, which I believe will be the start-finish line. So he gets to judge that as well as he can. I'm surprised he didn't go on the exit at the corner there. What's he going to do? We don't go on the green, you just heard that from iRacing, but that's not when we go, and he goes right at the end of the start zone to avoid giving too much of a slipstream down his start, finish straight, and he gets away nicely. We're side by side behind with Emre Camaldo and Eloy Caballero. We get through nicely, everybody making their way through fairly safely. Let's go to the leaders of GT3. These guys packing up nicely into turn one we go side by side a lot behind i think we're going to get some good racing through the hairpin and palo antonori is off at the back i believe couple more into the wall for palo antonori a very poor start and then double hit on the wall really unfortunately in the cock also off at the hairpin in the gtp field he's going to carry on we'll watch what happened in the gt3 Eloy's not happy with Emray from the start, I believe. Mateus Weiten has just made a double overtake into the hairpin, but there's big contact. And that's what I believe Jeffrey Ross has to make avoiding action behind and then ducks back in on the inside. That incident is already under investigation from race control. Mateo Lemroy also off in the hairpin section, so there's been contact there. With three wide in the GC3 field going into the kink, this is not going to end well if they try and stick it out. And they are going to try and stick it out. No, for BMW on the outside, backs off two wide through there. Under investigation is that incident between Lemroy, Bockhoven, uh, Blowman, and Jarvis. Four wide again, two wide into the second bit of the fast chicane. It all settles out a little bit though from there on. We're nice and close up front in the GT3 field. Oil Fox stretched away a little bit, but everybody else is still within that crucial second for that big, big toe. They're going to get down the back stretch into the hairpin. We're going to review some of what happened on the start at once this settles down a little bit. Then what happened to Liam DeCock? This was down on the run into the hairpin, I think. Not sure if he had to take avoiding action because he went really deep. It's going to get a mega, mega toe here, it looks like. All super deep on the brakes as they all pack up ahead. Manages to avoid everyone, very fortunately. What happened to Ovale and Emre then? Oh, this is going to be the incident that is under investigation with race control, I believe. There's, oh, Mate I tell you what, Mateus didn't really send it in. It looked like a different the camera angle, so it looks like Emre didn't really see what was going on. Let's take a look at what happened to... Uh, Matteo Lemre on lap one. We saw him really deep in the runoff here. Finds a little gap down the inside, and I think he's just going to go deep. Yes, he does, and finds his way through the field. Matteo Lemre, congratulations. That was pretty incredible. To avoid that, this is Adam Jarvis on Matteo Vitali just now into the hairpin oh and he finds a gap as adam jarvis has to take as matteo vitali sorry in front of him has to take avoiding action they're too wide behind that's adam jarvis trying to get past matteo vitali we just saw the beginning of this on replay that's a five second time penalty for the lap one instant for matteo vitali that was uh no matteo lemro sorry that'll be in the hairpin not surprised to see that penalty go his way but we could have been a lot lot worse as i'm sure he is well aware Sven Elmers and Dave Van Eck fighting into the hairpin. Sven goes deep. So it's not the hairpin. That's turn two. Surprised to see him overtaking there because that means that Sven's going to get a good run now. So that means that Dave is going to get a good run into the hairpin and have the inside line. What's Sven going to do to try and combat that? And they've got a car cruising up behind them very quickly. That's Teddy Ann Blowman also in the AM class. So these guys fighting it out for AM positions. 
on the defensive against Sven Elmers and there's contact at the apex. 4x for both of those drivers, and that's going to allow Matteo Batali, the pro driver, to try and sneak through. And look, Dave Van Eck's front bumper actually coming off as he drives down the straight. And Matteo Batali now defensive, the front bumper flies off. Dave Van Eck will be really losing front downforce here, that's been noted. Let's take a look at what happened to Sven Elmers. Coming down now into the hairpin, Sven Elmers is on the inside, and oh, well, Dave Van Eck. Uh, Appears to just turn in. Clearly thought he was clear of his rival when he was in fact not clear. It'll be it is under investigation now by race control, apologies. Sven Elmers and Dave Van Eck both in the pit lane right next to each other though. And Dave Van Eck will be looking to get back out ahead of his rival. They both use their fast repair to fix the damage that they both had. I'm not sure if they had a meatball flag. Dave Van Eck definitely had a meatball flag. It doesn't look like uh, Sven Elmers got one, but maybe just decided since he's in the pit window, he'll come in and do the repairs now to get him out of the way. Albert Prem leads the cars that are pitted and he's about to retake the lead on track as well. Yannick Gerrard's in the pit lane from the lead of GT3 Pro as well. And then uh, Liam de Kock has been off track on his own, somewhere a little bit further up the track, it looks like. Oh, yeah, deep in there, Ben. And that is a broken car, if I've ever seen one. Teo Ubatali all over the back of Ted Jan Bloman, the AM driver who is currently leading through nature pit strategy. But Matteo Ubatali wanting to put a pro back on top. Matteo Ubatali on the attack into the hairpin. Has he got enough speed to go for a move down the inside? He definitely thinks so. Tries to outbreak break for Dutchman, and that's really going to ruin the day for Ted Jan Bloman because Renz Verkirk follows him through, gives him a nudge. Ted Jan Bloman gives him a nudge back, actually. Matteo Batali giving the toe to Ted Jan Bloman, who's then going to keep that lead in GT3 Am, crucially. This battle still goes on. Going to be joined now by Liam de Kock and Senna Bockhoven, I believe. Liam just seen your incident on the stream very unfortunate i think you're not feeling very well today i don't know if that's contributed to that at all that's exactly it i've, I've been fighting my own body every every lap my pace is getting worse and worse each lap and i'm just yeah it's just got too much so i crashed and uh yeah now i'm not uh, gonna continue this yeah, it feels like I've got a pretty big fever as well right now. Oh, best to take it easy then. We've all been in yeah. <laughs> in those sorts of unfortunate situations. It's I commend you for even trying today, to be honest, based off what you said. Close fighting here. Mateo's trying to make his way past Carlos Pons in that stadium section that we're talking about. Can't find his way through. They're both tucked up behind Mateo Lemroy, neither of whom. Uh, neither of them able to make their way past him. This could be a good opportunity here for Matisse. And he's going to try and go down the inside into the kink, is he? And he's still got his nose alongside. And he does slots through. He takes a lot of curb. So does Carlos Pons on the outside. Carlos Pons not happy about that, understandably. Liam, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you're right on the limit to get the car through there on your own. A lot go wrong for people in this final sector today when they yeah. have tried to make a move. Yeah. Yeah, this is not really a spot to do it, but yeah, with the with the massive straight and and to the hairpin and into the second corner, you have quite a big good overtaking spot. Yeah, Sven Elm is on the inside of Carlos Villarejo gets loose. He just got past Dave Van Eck on the exit of the pit lane. He's got front bumper damage. Instantly under investigation from race control, who were clearly following along. I'll go to the shoes room. Jeffrey Ross there, trying to get the move done on Carlos Pons. Carlos Pons away on the grass. Jeffrey Ross goes to the outside, flashes his headlights at the GT3 to let them know he's coming. Needs to cover off his t uh, off his rival here, Carlos Pons, and does so nicely. That mistake from Carlos is going to prove costly, so it looks like you can overtake if your rival makes a little bit of a mistake. Now I want to try and pull away and close up to the cars ahead if he can. Really pushing it to the limit there, but Renzo Kirk... Knew that was his last real chance to get past, unless it's a mistake going for Tejan Bloman in the hairpin. We did see a couple in qualifying from him. Keeps it on track very nicely. Albert Prima's won in GTP Pro while we in GTP, sorry, while we are following 
this race. Matteo Batali will be about to take the checkered flag in GT3 Pro, and he does to win. And Yannick Gerards is going to hold on in the end. Like I said, they got very, very close on that last lap, but uh, manages to hold on. Matthias Weissner will be disappointed with P6 on his return to the series, but uh, he'll probably take that result, given that he did uh, a much longer pit stop than anyone else out there. And it's just getting back into the groove of these hour-long races. All right, well, big thanks to Liam for joining us in the commentary booth after that incident and great insights on the driver's side of what was going on as well. Thanks to everybody that joined us and we'll see you next time.